today. A little special today. We're gonna head out to Frisco and go to another Rolex meet. Pretty exciting day. We actually get to meet the owners today. Uh, Bruce and Stuart are gonna be there. It's the first time we're gonna actually meet them in person. And uh, hopefully I'll get to ask them a few questions about uh, Rolex and what they got going on for this season. And stay tuned guys, it's gonna be a bit of a drive, but we're heading out there now. Say goodbye to the lawn for today. Rain yesterday, so I got a lot of those grass clippings uh, sitting around on the lawn, but uh, I'll get that taken care of later in the week. It's looking good. Bye bye. <laughs>Go check it out. Big turnout. A lot of guys. X25 right here in the flesh. New mower for my friend. X20 with a Honda engine. GX160. Even got the real mowers logo on it. I got Johnny here. He just got a new Rolex mower X20 today. Uh, this one has a Honda GX160 engine on it, actually. So, funny story is that he actually had a Rolex before this one and with the he Briggs sold it. motor. It was the one with the Briggs motor, and then now he's getting one with a Honda GX160. Yep. Also includes a new front roller that. Um, uh, new Rolex one piece doing right? now one piece aluminum and it's got some new bearings on the side which uh lets this thing roll much easier so i think johnny does have some slopes on his lawn so it should be a lot more smoother yes and easier for him yeah on the side of the house i got a couple of slopes and with the previous mower it worked pretty good no issues going up the, the slopes so tell me about like uh you've used you've used rolex for almost about a year now so. yes about a year um Coincidentally, last year I had the uh, California trimmer with the single uh, drum on the back with the tires, and I was getting tired of it uh, shorting my lawn when I, when I was making turns. And at the same time, when I was complaining to you about it, you introduced me to Rolex, and I was able to get a uh, X20 from a local uh, enthusiast that was selling his, and haven't looked back since. No complaints. It works great. Cuts very well. And the rear drum, man, it makes a difference. Yeah, that rear drum is something else. I mean, it's like what I mentioned in my previous video. Um, you, you wouldn't be able to get this unless you had a greens mower, but not, that's not the case anymore. I mean, you can get that uh, with mowers like these. And it's like one of the game changers now. Like you can put a lot more easier stripes in your lawn due to the vulcanized rear drum. Yeah, so a lot of people ask, like, how long does this vulcanized drum last? 
and apparently it should last for a lifetime of the mower. That's what I heard too. Yeah. Yeah. I was asking Josh Ivy the other the other week whether the you know the thickness of this, and he said it really doesn't matter because they still have mowers that are like mowers from the, the 60s. 60s. Yeah, yeah that, are that are still, still using, using the same, same. vulcanized rubber. Yep. So very durable piece of material there for this mower, and it's really nice. I like this black on uh, black on red. He's got the red reel blades here, and then he's got the black. Uh, black uh, chassis and it also is up oh check place. it out and the new uh the new models came out with the chrome handlebars it's not uh oh yeah that's the brushed right. aluminum that's right like my previous one that was nice a little bling to the mowing action yep nice looking piece of machine right there All right, I got Christina. Christina with me, and she's a uh, she just I guess she just recently bought a Rolex, or correct? I've had the Rolex uh, 20 inch Honda engine. Okay. For a couple of months, I was one of the first ones to purchase it. I'm number 168, proud of that number. <laughs> Um, but pretty much purchased it primarily because the customer service was top notch. Mm -hmm. um, had so many questions and day or night, you know, I can contact Stuart, Josh, whomever, and I would, you know, get an actual um, individual contact me back. And, and they're live constantly. Um, you go on their Facebook page, they're active. Um, you don't see that with many other customers, um, excuse me, consumers. And with that being said, it's they're listening to their customers. They're listening to what their wants and needs are. Um, and they're looking into ways to innovate, make it easier for us to you know, mow it. Um, with that, they took into account if we wanted to, let's say, go electric, that's in the works. Mm -hmm. The different cartridges, that's in the works. Mm -hmm. um, whereas other companies, it's in one year, out the other. To them, it's just a dollar sign. Whereas yeah. with Rolex, I can honestly sit here and say wholeheartedly, and I'm passionate about it, that they're here. Face, we're right now in the U.S., they came, they flew to see us, um, speak to the customers, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. They're currently fixing a customer's uh, reel, but you mm -hmm. wouldn't see that anywhere else. Yep, yep. That's a good thing about them is, you know, it's almost like a, it's like a family thing. You know, you get to actually see them face-to-face uh, -face rather than, you know, talking to somebody over a phone or, exactly. or internet. Exactly. I, I call it the, the Jeep world and the lawn, yeah. the lawn era. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I'm a diehard Jeep, uh, Jeep fan. I'm a Wrangler <laughs> owner, mm -hmm. and it's a community. <laughs> yeah. And Literally, I didn't think there was ever a community right outside of that, but here yeah. I am with the Rolex, and it's... It's the same concept. Uh -huh. It's the Rolex community now. Yeah, yep, it is. So tell me, how did you get into real mowing in the first place? How did I get into it? Um, honestly, I just did it one day. Mm -hmm. I. You said you started out with an Earthwise. Right? I start. I still to this day have my original Earthwise. I've, wow. I've, I've had it for three years. Um, the 16-inch seventh blade um, with the 17-pound uh, rear wheel, um, and. That's what I did. I've been doing that ever since. Rolux started, I just heard the name Rolux just popping out yep. left and right. Yep. And I ended up with one. That's yeah. what it was. It's a game changer now that you're uh, you're doing actually a gas power real mower versus pushing, oh, right? <laughs> I'm no longer sweating for hours on end. I'm able to complete my lawn in about 30 minutes versus three hours. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, big game changer. Um, but yeah. Major game changer. Um, super easy. I'm vertically challenged. I'm a nice five, four and a half. And not many real gas real mowers um, allow for that vertically challenged individual. Yeah, yeah, but with the Rolux, it's so comfortable. The adjust, having to adjust the handlebars, it's super easy. Um, uh, you know, unscrew a couple of bolts. Adjust your handlebars, tighten them back up, and you're good to go. No matter your height, whether you're six five or five five. Yep. And, and it's, I'm telling you, it's truly just, it's meant for the consumer. It's meant for us. And, and you have you have the X20, right? Correct. It, okay. With the okay. Honda. Um, Honda GX one sixteen. Um, yeah. Awesome. Luckily me, I got it when the uh, ribbed roller was 
you know, part of a promotion with you, ah, so it's free. Yeah, so those, it was a wash me. I got yeah, the Honda yep. and uh, Red Roller for free. Yeah, so. those rollers are nice. I, no more able to do that for anyone else. Ha ha. <laughs> if you're concerned, if you're torn between which one no. to go to, no. do your research. Mm -hmm. um, join the different, you know, groups on Facebook. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. And you'll be thoroughly impressed that nothing compares to Rolox. And I'm not just saying that because I bought it. I'm telling you, if you go to these groups, you'll notice a difference. You'll notice a difference in the, the people that are part of it. You'll notice a difference in the customer service. You'll just notice a difference. And with that, there's no way you'll, you'll go against Rolox. Awesome. You'll end up buying it. All right, I'm back here with Josh Ivey. He's got something special to show us today. He's finally going to reveal the new and updated Groove Roller here that's going to be coming out on all the machines. Man, this thing's a beast. I bet it's keeping the mower grounded too, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, it's already out on a lot of the machines, but um, now they all come with bearings so on the sides, so it makes it for a super smooth roll. When you turn, it makes it easier to turn because it has such a super smooth bearing roll to it. Keeps the grass standing up good because it still has a nice um, wide groove in it and uh, it definitely keeps the mower yeah. running straight. I think I saw a video of, uh, was it Bruce that was cutting on your lawn with it? Yeah. Yeah, so how's it cutting so far now that you've used it? Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's, you know, it definitely is doing its job. Um, I, I like the improvement over the old one. One, for the bearings, and two, it doesn't have those um, plates on it, so it doesn't. The, the plates seem over time to have made it walk a little bit. So um, this is definitely a major improvement. I love this thing. This thing's an awesome. And I, yeah. think, I think you said I think you said that this was actually even lighter, but it but it, it's it, a little bit lighter, but it actually makes the mower feel more balanced. Uh, when I mowed with it, it was like I mowed with a whole new mower again, and and it was for the better. And you say you were able to get the turns much easier too, right? Yeah, because the bearings are so smooth on it. It just makes so much easier for the turns. I got Bruce and Stuart with me, two owners from Rolex. They flew from South Africa to come and visit Texas. Fellas, this is your first time in Texas. Did you ever think you would come visit here? <laughs> a year ago, I would have said no. Well, a year ago, I probably would have said we would come here on holiday. Yeah. But probably in the last mo nine months, it's looked more increasingly more promising. promising. And yeah, we're finally, we're happy that it's finally happened. And is there anything you always wanted to do or try if you ever came to Texas? Yes. I wanted to ride a bull. I want to ride a bull. Yeah. We, and <laughs> I went to the rodeo last night. Yeah. And, uh, and I said to them, can I ride a bull? They were like, are you joking? It's for professionals only. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, uh, I said, okay, well, I guess that rules that out. So we went and watched them instead, which was really, really fun. Okay. Yeah. They don't have bulls in South Africa at all. No, not no. like that. Not okay. like crazy ones that kick you off. <laughs> no, I went, our bulls at dinner, not yeah. <laughs> But also trying smoked meat. Yeah, good. Yeah. That was a that was a big thing. Um, yeah, yeah, and that was very yeah. successful. Have you guys had you, you guys already tried the Texas barbecue? Already, yes. Right? yes. Okay. Yes. Well, we've been staying at Josh's place, and yeah. uh, and Josh cooked us a fourteen hour brisket, which was amazing. Oh, wow. Uh, it smoked. Yeah. The uh, longer I heard that, the longer it smoked, the better the meat tastes. Yeah. yeah. And his wife Jen last night cooked us pork belly and pork tenderloin on the smoker, and it was un. 
unbelievable. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So you guys, you got, you guys have a, you got a exposure to, to some Texas food now. Yeah, we're awesome. Coming, we're coming back. We're coming back for sure. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So brief history on Rolex. How to get started? Where did the the name Rolex come from? It's a, it's, it's an, it, it's actually a sixty odd year old brand. Okay. And uh, it was started in South Africa a long, long time ago. It's got a, it's a household name in the country. It's, um, it's, it's, it. We actually have no idea where it came from originally, yeah, origin. but, but our family bought um, that plus a, another company you know, a few years ago, and uh, we we bought it just before it was about to die, and um, we've, so we managed to revive it and grow it, and that's kind of. You know, we try to we manage to retain all the jobs and grow the jobs, and that that makes us feel very proud. So, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Is it is it well known internationally? Because you yes. know, in the U.S., I guess it's still kind of new, but internationally, yeah. it's 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 basically all around. It's, it's it's exceptionally well known in Africa, of course, mm -hmm. um, and we've got uh, quite a big following now in Australia, and uh, we've been selling a lot into the Middle East. Believe it or not. Um, the Asian market's not so big, mm -hmm. um, and the next big opportunity for us was into America. We decided not to go into Europe just yet um, because of the regulation. It's just it's quite a difficult place to build a lawnmower business. Mm -hmm. um, but our focus was on Africa, Australia, the Middle East, and now we're really, really focused fully on America. Yeah, laser okay. focused, on laser focused on the states. That's good. That's great to see that we got uh, we got a lot of competition now because uh, with the residential market. We're all used to the Cali trimmers, yeah. the True Cuts, yeah. and the McLean. And now that Rolex has stepped into the market, it's, it's a game changer. Now all these guys are spooked about it and they're, <laughs> they're trying to make haste decisions, you know, and not very good ones, you know, versus what you guys have already accomplished. Yeah, thank you. I think ago. what Stu's always said and what we've always said is that we're not really here to disrupt or cause trouble, or we're here to create more of an industry because mm -hmm. it's a small ish industry kind of niche at the moment but if we're able to grow the industry for everyone then everyone's going to benefit yeah. so if we're going to bad mouth down talk anyone it's actually detrimental to the whole industry where we've been fully supportive of the whole industry rather than just of the rolex brand so if someone says they got a cali trimmer great machines the real rollers revolution great machines mclean they're all good machines and they fit into their place and they fit into the market well. We're just here to kind of grow the whole industry and see where that takes us. Yeah, and it's a, it's it's a fun it's it's fun for us to to be talking to people who are passionate about their lawns like we are. The market's very different here to what it is in South Africa, mainly because in South Africa we live behind big walls. Here, you guys have got um, you know fantastic lawns onto your homes, and so. Again, like Bruce said, echoing that, we, we, we're looking at trying to build this so that guys can get better options, mm -hmm. they can get more affordable options. You know, we pride ourselves on the fact that we give a range of products, a range of engines, a range of sizes, a range of blades, a range of colors. And I really think, but most importantly, we're trying to build machines that actually last a long time, as opposed to being put onto lawn, being used for six months or a year, and then they get thrown in the bin. And kind of that's our always been our driving force. And we, that speaks not only to the machine, but to the relationship we try to have with customers too. Awesome. And I think on that as well, it's the way that the industry grows is we focused our basically our life on having a good product, but unbelievable customer service. And if someone's buying a product, they're spending hard earned dollars on it, they should be getting that kind of service. Obviously, a real mower has got a lot more moving parts than a rotary mower. So you are going to get people who need a bit more assistance. And it's all about educating people, getting them used to their machine. And if they've got an issue, helping them out with it. Yeah. And that's what everyone in the market should be doing. Yeah. That's how we're going to grow the industry. And it makes the customers a bit more comfortable with their purchase. Yeah. Why does it say professional on the side of the, on the mower? <laughs> so the business, when we bought the company, there were two brands in the company. One was Rolex, one was professional. Ah. The professional um, range was in South Africa. The professional brand is very South African. Okay. And so the professional on the side is a testament to that. It's a combination of the two brands that we own. Mm -hmm. But also, it's for us, it's a professional. We're aiming ourselves to be a professional brand. A professional brand that can be used by homeowners, you know. So it's not we're not trying to be a a, a plastic machine. Um, so really, the word professional speaks to history, but also to um, to what we're trying to create. We're trying to create a professional 
business, a professional industry, a professional product, a professional customer service um, um, experience. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's a combination of history plus what we're trying to do for the future. Okay, awesome. Is Scott Bonner, is it Scott Bonner's? Yes. Is, it, is that the same machine or is that totally different? It's a different machine. Um, but it's so Scott Bonner was a brand that came out of Australia. Okay. Um, it's a brilliant machine. Okay. And the but the brand Scott Bonner has kind of they kind of disappeared. Nobody you you can buy aftermarket Scott Bonner parts, but it's not um, it's not a it doesn't sell they don't sell their own machines. So when you see a Scott Bonner online, there's a good chance that it's either not a real Scott Bonner, mm. or that somebody has fixed up their old Scott Bonner. Mm. Our machines are of a similar age to the Scott Bonner. So mm -hmm. we're not quite sure whether ours was modeled on theirs or theirs was modeled on ours in terms of like the, 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 the shape. At the end of the day, the, the Scott Bonner is a fantastic machine that stood the test of time and continues to, and it's got a really great cult following specifically in Australia. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. There's, a, there's a ton of cylinder mowers that are actually out there internationally. Yeah. And then it just, you know, they're hearing these names, Scott Bonner, uh, Mole Masters, I think. That's is right. One. It's a good quality and brand. And now, you know, Rolex is coming in. They're like, oh, you know, these, these have a little similarities to it, but it's good to actually know, like, where they're coming from. Yeah. So far this year, looks like the demand on these machines are picking up now. So what are you looking to accomplish by the end of this year? We want to finish this year with happy customers. Okay. Yeah. It's not about numbers. It's not about growth. It's not about profits. profits. It's yeah. not about, it's also not about loss. It's about making sure that our customers understand what we're trying to be so that we can grow from there. This is a foundational year for us. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, we're not, we're not trying to shoot the lights up. We're not trying to go expand too fast or too hard. We, we want to zone in on the customer too. So like a day like today is so important for us so we can speak to people, hear what they need and want, uh, so people online can put faces to names, yeah. see that we're real and we exist yeah. and we're here to support and we're here for the, for the long haul. Um, and also to show people, you know, that our, what this means to us and to our family. And um, we said earlier when everyone was here that, you know, we just appreciate the support that the American people have given us. Um, American industry, specifically Briggs and Stratton, have given us amazing support and We've never been involved in a nation like this, which has given us the support that we've gotten. And the people who we deal with are just great people, very down to earth, very similar to the people we deal with at home. And so for us to answer your question, we're not, we're not aiming for numbers. We're aiming for a, a, a feeling. Some establishment, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's establishing a, it's, you know, after a year of operation, after two years of operation, you're real and you exist. For us, that's what it's about. And as we go, improve the machines and start bringing out different offerings and the like. I think one of the most important things about an event like today is not as it's not as much about pushing sales or whatever. It's and not even as much about us meeting potential owners. It's nice to get people together, like-minded mm. people together. So people who are lawn enthusiasts. So. It's not really about us speaking to the customers, it's about them speaking to each other and just throwing ideas around yeah. and, and kind of bouncing ideas off. Basically growing a community. And the community, and the community is it. the key. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing for us. The most mm -hmm. important thing for us is the community that's being built. And it's not only the Rolex community, mm -hmm. it's the real mowing community. Yeah. It's the mowing community. And, and for us, mowing the lawn is not only about it looking great. It's about... A feeling that you get it's about the people who enjoy it too yeah. and you know as a result of this thing this thing of entering the states and we've met how many people have we met hundreds, hundreds of people yeah. who are similar to us similar to the people we know back home mm -hmm. people we know in Australia and the Middle East and ultimately it shows that we're all we've got something in common and that's what we love so it allows us to make friends and it's great it's just awesome. Are there any new things being worked on in the uh, uh, upcoming year? Perhaps maybe a battery power real mower. Yes. Is there? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Can't give too much detail, but it's there's a lot in the pipeline. Yeah, okay. there's a lot. So, 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 so there's been a big discussion about it. Yeah, yes. I mean, look, we, we in South Africa are, and out, and into Africa are not only a real mowing business, actually. Uh, we, we've got a whole range of products. We've got... 18 inch machines, we've got 21 inch rotaries, we've mm -hmm. got sculping machines, dethatching, we've got all sorts of products. We've got a 30 inch machine, um, 
we've got way more than what we've got right now. This year is foundational for us, so it's, we don't want to go too wide. But w what's coming in the new year, next year, is going to be a massive growth in our range. And that will service not only households, but professional users. Okay, so like the commercial industry. Yeah, we're definitely going to yeah. be hitting on the commercial industry door because we, we know that there's an opportunity in that space. And it's, um, and it's important for, for us, our machines are good enough to be to used in a commercial setting, mm -hmm. but, but it's about providing those users with what they want. You know, it's not only saying like, okay, here's a residential mower, use it. It's about saying, you've got a commercial application. What is it that, about our machine that we can utilize to and improve on to make it better for you? So the range is gonna grow. We're going to aim a lot more towards the commercial market and yeah. And it's a lot of products that we have available already. So yeah. it's not, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not trying to copy, copy, paste and just power through products, put them into the market. Our thing is quality, quality and customer service are number That's one. Mm -hmm. And our whole thing is products have to be built to last, built for life. So we have to we have to stand by that yeah. if we, we we're not going to put out a product that you're going to be buying once a year it needs to be as near to bulletproof as possible that's right okay explain what is your reasoning for not going relief grind i believe you called it spin grind yep is that is that a common thing outside of the us yes inevitably somebody's going to ride over something that is not perfect for the mower yeah Real mowers are already complicated machines. They're already expensive machines. So our argument is put a thicker blade on, put a far more affordable bed knife on, and let the bed knife take the brunt of your machine getting knocked. Mm. If you've got a r relief ground uh, reel and you hit a stone, there's a good chance you have to replace that reel. Our argument is, as a homeowner, that I don't want that. So with a four millimeter thick hardened blade, the chances of you having to replace that blade unless you do something really intense to that machine like driving over concrete and you know putting a steel rod in there it's going to be okay and the bed knife is what gets sacrificed and you can buy a bed knife from us for 40 or something dollars yeah, but it, uh, the yeah. prime example is here yeah when danny, danny decided that he would mow his pavement <laughs> and we've spent the last 15 20 minutes he had ordered a new reel but we've managed to reset that perfectly now. So, so the reel's fine. The you reel's fine. Change the bed, the bed knife. knife. Change the bearing. The machines, yeah, the bearing broke, um, which is understandable. But but the reel's so it's, fine. His cold cost of fixing the machine, which is pretty much a catastrophic error now, is probably under a hundred bucks. And that's the that's trying to that's where our value we think comes in. It's the same as if you're on a golf course or if you're using it for municipal purposes. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance that the user takes it off the truck, doesn't really worry about you know they they don't want it to drop and then oh it's broken and a piece of plastic drops off. Mm -hmm. They you know they're going to be rough with the machine, same as on a homeowner's piece of grass. You don't know if there's a stone there that your child's thrown mm -hmm. onto the lawn. For as much time as you spend on your lawn, there's a good chance they're going to hit something. And we want the machine to have the best possible chance of survival. And the, when you do have a problem that it's easy and cheap to replace. Yeah, so that's 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 very neat. So it's a more of a cost effective option yeah. versus, you know, people spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars replacing a real that's right, when yeah. you can spend less than $100 replacing a bed knife. That's yeah. right. That's, yeah, I like that. And, and, and uh, just the last part about that is we, do, we are considering a relief grind, minor relief grind, okay. if the market wants that. But our, it's, our experience so far is that once people have used the machine, they realize you can still backlap this machine. Mm -hmm. You can find spin, grind, um, spin grinders in their area. That it's actually better like this because you don't have to worry so much about maintenance headaches. If there was a high demand for a cartridge system, how hard would it be for Rolex to produce such a machine? It's, it's not complicated for us to produce a cartridge system. Our debate is whether it's necessary. Um, there is definitely demand for it. How big is that demand is the question. It's not, it, a cartridge system is not complicated to make. It's, it, for us though, for the amount of people who need all of those cartridges, relative to the amount of people who need a mower, the mower is by far the thing that people need the most. So we want to produce the world's best mower. 
Do, are we close to a cartridge system? I don't think we're close to it, but we think there's better solutions out there and that's also part of our plan. So there's keeping a great mower and then looking at a, an external system is, like we were saying earlier, it's very much in our plans for next year. So you might be surprised. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think I remember uh, on the live stream, uh, John was introducing, uh, was it a, th a D thatcher yes, machine? Yes, yes. So that's kind of like something to look forward to. Yes. And then you probably have other things. Those are the those, those are actually coming in hot. Those will be uh, in the next couple of months. In the next couple of months, yeah. they'll be yeah. we'll be launching them relatively soon. But yeah, they're going on. They're produced, waiting on containers. The the, the that machine can be used as a D thatcher and scarify, and can also be used as a regular mower. Cuts really low. Cuts. The lowest it cuts is two. It's eight <laughs> mil, well, it's seven mils, which is about five sixteenths of an inch. Yeah, that's on the regular mow. If you want to use the, if you want to use it as a dethatcher, it drops below. Okay. So it goes into, it below, goes into ground. below ground. So it goes into negative, mm -hmm. and it goes as high as probably one and a two, half, one and a half, two inches. Yeah, one and a half, two inches. Yeah, on the top end. Awesome. Zoysia grass right here. Can't even tell the difference between this and Bermuda, honestly. According to some people, this is the Lambo grass of the grasses. Man, look at the blades. They're very small too, just like Bermuda. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today's video. I've got to admit, this has been one of the most enjoyable experience I've had in 2024 so far. It's incredible how connecting with fellow real mower enthusiasts at events like this can be so fulfilling. Rolex deserves a huge shout out for not only creating a business but also fostering a tight-knit community of like-minded individuals. Their dedication to both their product and the community it serves is truly commendable. It's not every day you get to interact directly with the owners of a company, but Rolex makes it happen. Don't forget to show your support by liking and subscribing to my channel, it really keeps the momentum going. And stay tuned because I've got plenty more exciting content coming your way later this year. And for those who are interested in upgrading to a real mower or diving into this rewarding hobby, be sure to check out Rolex. I'll include their contact information in the description below. Wishing you all a happy mowing. And until next time, take care. <laughs>